Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here with another episode of PSVR News that I already recorded, but I forgot to unmute the microphone. So, as you can imagine, not in a good place right now. Let's just get to the news, and let's just get to the topic, let's get this over with. Alright, first things first I wanted to talk about is Gran Turismo 7, and that is because today, PlayStation have updated their website on several of their PlayStation 5 games that are coming out, so the likes of Gran Turismo, Demon Souls, uh, Horizon, all that stuff. Got new screenshots, new bits of information, not huge uh, big things, but you know, uh, updates. The kind of stuff that you'd read at the back of the box, uh, you know, blurbs and whatnot. Uh, but I was kind of hoping that when we got new information about Gran Turismo 7, especially in something like this, they would give us some kind of mention about PS VR support. And that is because, of course, PS4, we have Gran Turismo Sport and that was launched with PlayStation viewer support and they kind of heavily promoted that uh, like immediately it was like uh, when they announced Gran Turismo Sport I'm pretty sure they announced that PlayStation viewer support was coming along with us no such luck here so it could be something to be worried about I don't want to be too negative I'm not saying it's definitely not happening or anything like that it's, it's kind of like the same with Resident Evil 8 that game, because Resident Evil 7 had it and it was apparently successful, you would kind of imagine that it's going to have it again in Resident Evil 8. But they're not talking about it, they're not confirming it. Kind of important to say as well that they're not denying it either. They haven't come out and said, no, there's not going to be VR. So that gives me hope too. But in terms of Gran Turismo 7 here, I believe this blurb right here, I mean, this really highlights it here, you know, enjoy the best features from past installments of the series. Uh, if you would ask me, and I guess a lot of you too, because you're watching the PlayStation VR channel, uh, what's the best feature of Gran Turismo Sport? You would say PlayStation VR mode, maybe, unless you're a big fan of Gran Turismo or whatever. Even though that was a pretty anemic mode, it was very basic, didn't have online. You're bit, I think you're just racing against one AI the whole time, you couldn't even increase the difficulty or whatever, so it was a very limited virtual reality mode, but still, it was pretty fun. It was nice to be in those cars, those highly detailed cars and whatnot, and we would like to see something like that expanded upon in Gran Turismo 7, but they will not mention it at all. They'll talk about the key features down here, basically, you know, driving simulation, the garage, and then you got the PS5 features, like the stuff like the adapter triggers, the 4K, this SSD, the super speeds and all that kind of stuff, but not a single mention of PSVR. Now, don't get me wrong, all this stuff is really cool. If you're a fan of Gran Turismo or just racing games in general, this stuff here was probably, you know, got your tail wagging. Rightly so, you know, because this stuff sounds fantastic. But not a single mention of PSVR. I mean, you know what? Just to be sure, P S V or no. No PSVR mentioned once. You know? How about virtual reality? No. No. Look, again, I don't want to be too negative. I just don't understand why Sony won't talk about them, or not even Sony, you know, Capcom. They're not talking about Resident Evil A's either. Now there has been, I've gotten feedback from people on Twitter or my YouTube comments and all that kind of stuff, uh, saying, look, there could be a big PS viewer event, like January or February or whatever, and then they'll start revealing, oh, Resident Evil A's, Gran Turismo 7, fully playable in VR, etc, etc. I'm not 100% convinced about that, I mean, I, that would be nice, or even like a stays of play, something like that. I don't know, it just seems, something seems off. Like, if you were going to save all this stuff for an event, why not save Hitman for the event too? I know Hitman's coming out early next year, maybe that has something to do with us. But, yeah, listen, keep an eye on us. I'm not ruling us out, I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, I'm just ever so slightly concerned, you know? Same with Resident Evil Ace. Uh, because at Resident Evil Ace, of course, there was TGS, the Tokyo Game Show, they had a Capcom showcase i guess you could call this that was was it two hours long it was like a long one they went into detail about resident evil as well not huge detail or whatever but they didn't mention virtual reality once that was another opportunity for them to mention virtual reality and they didn't this is another opportunity here for gran turismo and they didn't so you know we should at least be asking questions you know so next topic i want to talk about then is the walking dead onslaught so first things first I've made a video about The Walking Dead Onslaught before, and in the comments, I got a lot of people saying, what the hell are you saying? Apparently, I don't pronounce Onslaught correctly. So you guys probably want me to say The Walking Dead Onslaught, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say Onslaught, and if you have a problem with that, hit the road, you biggest, you ignorant biggest, all right? 
But if you're cool with that, then you can stay. And we'll talk about the reception for The Walking Dead Onslaught. So what I've got here are two different reviews of The Walking Dead Onslaught. This one from PSU, PlayStationUniverse.com, and this one from Upload Viewer by David Jagno. Uh, this one here is by Eric Hauser. We'll start with this one. This is the more positive one. Very positive. 9 out of 10, this guy. Uh, we'll just skip down to the, the summary at the end because that's what they're there for, am I right? So 9 out of 10, Eric says, with a well-written story, fantastic world building, and great bloody combat, The Walking Dead Onslaught is a fantastic companion piece to the beloved AMC show and a great viewer game in its own right. Supply runs provide a perfect mix of speedy action and tense combat, while the narrative portions feel carefully and artfully constructed. While the viewer level budget peaks through on occasion, this is an amazingly well-made and entertaining game. So, very high praise uh, by Eric Hotter here, if I'm saying his name correctly. So let's compare that with David Jagno over on UploadViewer.com. And we'll skip down to his end piece. Well, we'll see what score he gave it first. So, two stars out of five. And that is a meh. He's given it a meh rating. Which is not great. You can see here. They go from avoid, meh, good, grace, essential. So this game has been met by uh, Servios, and Servios do have a good pedigree on PSVR. I think we all knew we, it wasn't going to be a trash game, at the very least, like it was going to have like some solid foundation in there. That's what prevents it from being an avoid, because it still does have the solid foundation. It works, it's functioning. It's just that they met it too easy, apparently, according to all these reviews. Uh, we'll look at the pros here. Norman Reedus, a great voice actor which is fair enough. Uh, the gore and blood effects are extremely satisfying and Alexandria settlement mechanics are interesting. So you'll see there's nothing really here about the actual gameplay itself. I mean, you could talk about the effects being satisfying, but that's like visual effects. Uh, over here then in the negatives, scavenger missions ruined by annoying red fog to represent the horde. So from my understanding, you're doing these scavenger missions and they've got like a limit. So the time limits, I guess you could say, is that there's a wall, a horde, a zombie horde closing in. But instead of actually putting a horde of zombies there, they've got like a battle royale style uh, fog or gas coming in. It's red. And that's supposed to represent the zombies. You step inside us and like these bite marks appear on the screen, uh, which is, I mean, the limitations of the hardware, of course, you can't expect them to have a very you know, an actual horde filled with like, you know, hundreds and thousands of zombies attacking you or whatever. But what they've done with the red fog is pretty kind of shitty looking. Then you've got campaign is linear and uninspired. Now that goes against what uh, Eric said on PSU. So maybe this is up for interpretation or for debate. So combat is unbalanced with unbreakable weapons and dumb AI. So you start off with a combat knife that's pretty much all you need. That combat knife is overpowered, it kind of breaks the game, you stab everything in the head, they go down. Even in instances, I was watching GT, his review of the game, where he's supposed to be running away from a big horde, he just stopped, turned around, bang, 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 killed like 20 of them, or however, however many were chasing them. Uh, but it was so simple, and it was supposed to be a big climax. The music was, you know, the crescendo of the music, you know, it was all getting hype and all this shit, but he just turned around, killed them all, and took all the tension out of it. And then, lack of motivation to gather materials for settlement upgrades. And why is that? Basically, you've already got the best weapon in the game when you start. Uh, why would you need anything else, essentially? So that's like a review that's very positive, a review that's pretty negative, but I will say if you go onto the YouTube reviewers who aren't on the Metacritic, uh, the likes of Gamertag, he gave it a 4 out of 10, he was pretty scathing about it, he was like waste for it to go on sale for like $5 or £5 sterling, whatever. Without Parole gave it like a 6.4, which is, you know, average. And they shared a lot of the same complaints you're seeing here, the game being too easy, not being balanced. Although Without Parole did complement the gameplay loop, so it would make you wonder if maybe a patch can come along, if they can make the enemies more difficult, if they can add durability to melee weapons so that they're not, you know, infinite kill machines. Maybe that could save the game a little bit. As it stands, it seems like the game is a bit of a letdown. And even David Jagno says, I think he says it best here, he says, I hate to say it, but The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is just a much better example of how to create an immersive VR world. Much better use of the source material and much better game in general. So basically, why would you buy The Walking Dead Onslaught? when The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is such a much better game and that exists. 
it's disappointing. I was expecting Onslaught to be really good. Uh, the trailers looked really good. Uh, I'm actually kind of shocked that it turned out this way and it got the reception that it did. Fingers crossed Servios can pull something out of the bag and improve the game. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Star Wars Squadrons. And that is because this character here, uh, this YouTube channel, the Gaming Noisemakers, managed to get their hands on an early copy. So there's actual VR gameplay uh, of Star Wars Squadrons live out there. Now, now I'm not going to play the whole video or anything because that will be like, you know, stealing content or whatever. I'm not going to do that. But you can play the video. I'll play a few seconds. You'll get an idea of the actual gameplay. So he's playing us on a PS4 Pro. Uh, he's not using a hot ass. He's using the DualShock 4. So you'll get some idea. Check it out. I'll put the link to this in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, but the game and Noisemakers. Check that out and get hype because that game is out in like, what, two days? 24 hours? Less? And if you've pre-ordered this, you'll get it at midnight. I'm looking forward to this game. I know loads of people are looking forward to this game. It's probably PS viewers' biggest game this year, maybe. If you take Dreams, maybe Dreams. This Saints and Sinners up there too. Uh, look, it's definitely going to be a big game, I think. Although I believe this guy says that the online isn't up and running yet. So what you're going to see here, until the servers go live, is uh, just the single player campaign that he's gone through, I think. And so yeah, that is it for this episode of PSVR News. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. But before I end the video, let me give a huge thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. Thanks to their generosity, this channel can stay moist. In particular, let me give a huge shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters. Chopped 517, Tradition, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, and Crumb. Thank you very much for that top tier generosity. I really do appreciate this. If you would like to help me out over on Patreon too, the uh, link will be in the description below. If not, I'll be just as happy with likes, subscribes, you know, all that usual YouTube shite. Finally, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. Check him out in the link below as well at Decepticon.com and you'll find him in all the usual spots. Until next time, stay moist.